fan bases feel. So it's an accurate perception of the reality around Carson Wentz. And that's why face-to-face, sitting right next to the guy, for him to come out and say, here's what's being said about you, do you think that's fair, I think is a great way to frame a question. And it leads to, a lot of times, very interesting answers. Now, Carson doesn't necessarily give the most interesting answers in general, and in this case, but that's when you're going to get, like if this, if he had gone viral and Wentz had said, I think it's ridiculous that people feel that way, Here's what I hated in Philadelphia. Indianapolis didn't trust me, but I didn't trust the organization right back. I'm glad to be here. Then suddenly no one would be talking about the question. It's because Carson took the high road, gave us you know some very vanilla answers, smiled his way through it, that it's a story about the reporter and not the answers. Keep asking difficult questions because it's something that I would like to think I would do in the situation. I think a lot of us would too. Uh, Jim Rome coming up next here on CBS Sports Radio. DSL, thank you. Doug Williams here filling in. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you tomorrow, same time. Protect your vehicle's engine with Syntec and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Syntec Premium. Full synthetic motor oil is formulated for today's engines to dissipate heat and friction and reduce wear. And right now, get five quarts of Syntec full synthetic and micro guard select filter for just $33.99. Try Syntec today exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or go to OReillyAuto.com. They're close, convenient, and known for guaranteed everyday low prices and excellent customer service from the professional parts people you know you can trust. It's not easy being the one everyone counts on to keep the facility running, no matter the weather or supply chain hiccup. But we get you, Raymond in Buffalo and Maria in Miami, Jules in Minneapolis and Stan in central Indiana, taking control of everything that's under your control. At Granger, we're here for you with experienced branch staff at over 250 locations so you get the product you're looking for. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. This pepperoni was carefully placed by hand by a pizza maker at Papa John's. Just like this one, and that one over there. Ooh, and even these in the crust. Get yourself the new epic pepperoni stuffed crust pizza only at Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, the Papa John's epic stuffed crust one-topping pizza is only $13.99 and is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. I can't think of anyone who doesn't love a clean car, but how often do you actually go to the car wash? Does it take too long, or maybe it's just not a very nice place? Tommy's Express changes everything. Our wash is bright, inviting, clean, and fast. I love the flat conveyor belt. So easy to pull onto, much smoother ride, and safer for my car. And when you join Tommy Club, you can wash as often as you like for one low monthly price. I save money and time. We're Tommy's Express. At the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road, Greenville. Beauty Bar Medi Spa wants to know if you are ready to fall into beauty October 7th through the 14th. All services and products will be on sale. Botox, filler, painless laser hair removal, facials, RF microneedling, rejuvenating laser treatments to treat brown spots, wrinkles, texture, veins, and skin tightening. And now, the only facility in the area to offer non-surgical under-eye fat pad treatments. BeautyBarMediSpa.com, Red Banks Road, Greenville. Go Pirates! Welcome to U.S. Cellular, where new and current customers choose any phone they want for free. Free? Even the one with 5G and lots of storage? Free. And the one with the latest everything? Free. At U.S. Cellular, any phone you see is free, whether you're a new or current customer. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. You've worked hard to make your business successful, and that's why it's really important to always have a bank in your corner when you need them. This is former ECU baseball player Ashley Capps from First Bank, and our experienced team of local bankers includes Lee Watson, Bonner Latham, Chris Richards, Josh Hooten, and Heath Nisbet. To get the business services that are right for your business today, come and see someone on our team at First Bank on Arlington Boulevard here in Greenville. First Bank, together with our customers, we're creating a world where individuals and communities thrive. Member FDIC equal housing lender. 
Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. UniversitySportswearENC.com is your one-stop shop for all promotional products for your business. With over 1 million items to shop from, UniversitySportswearENC.com offers high-quality products at prices to fit any budget. Visit UniversitySportswearENC.com for contact information and to get shopping. UniversitySportswearENC.com, the official sportswear provider of Pirate Radio. Every team knows that two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. When I need jeans, I order online because I know exactly what I want. They have just one moving part, and if there's something wrong, I exchange them. Buying a vehicle, especially pre-owned, is way different. Lots of moving parts. You don't want to get stuck. For a worry-free purchase, visit Phelps Chevrolet. We've been here in town a very long time. You know us. You know we stand behind everything we sell. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Come get you one. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern Carolina's longest running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostic Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagler, Tiebreakers and Greenville Auto World. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome into our show. Got a great show planned for you as we move closer and closer to the start of the football season. The high school football season kicks off this Friday night. That's the season debut of Touchdown Friday. For our show today, Mike Oresco, the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, joins us. Also, Skip Holtz, former East Carolina coach who led the Birmingham Stallions to the USFL championship this past year will join us as well. It should be a great show. We'll kick it off with the commissioner, Mike Oresco, right after this. Sear Chop House is Greenville's only true chop house. We're open seven days a week. Seared combines a remarkable menu with an unrivaled atmosphere. Lunch or dinner at Seared is a quality driven experience where we highlight a thoughtful approach to locally sourced ingredients and hearty flavor rich cuisine. We're firing up the grill at Seared, Greenville's only true chop house located on Fire Tower Road at Bell's Fork. Come see us at Seared seven days a week. Your vehicle is a big part of your life. That's why you should trust the team at Greenville Auto World for all your vehicle needs. Greenville Auto World believes in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right. Visit GreenvilleAutoWorld.net to see their fully stocked inventory of SUVs, trucks, and cars. Need a lift kit, custom rims, or wheels? Greenville Auto World can upgrade your vehicle today. For sales or service, visit Greenville Auto World on Highway 43 in Greenville. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around. Guaranteed. Hi, I'm Ken Hagler of Taft Taft and Hagler. We're proud to be sponsors of the Brian Bailey Show and the Pirate Nation on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. If you've been injured on the job or due to someone else's negligence in an automobile collision, call us at 752-2000 for a free consultation with experienced professionals who care. Go Pirates! 
This pepperoni was carefully placed by hand by a pizza maker at Papa John's. Just like this one, and that one over there. Ooh, and even these in the crust. Get yourself the new epic pepperoni stuffed crust pizza only at Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, the Papa John's epic stuffed crust one-topping pizza is only $13.99 and is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Take a hit from a 300-pound linebacker, and you better be wearing pads. Take a hit on the road, and you better have good auto coverage. When you've got North Carolina Farm Bureau Auto Insurance, you've got the best local agents ready to help you bounce back. If you don't, well, you'll probably play football without a helmet, too. In Pitt County, call Carlton Venters or C.J. Messerly at 252-756-3007. North Carolina Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Insurance of North Carolina Incorporated, Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. Lots of stuff going on. The Softball World Series Championship game was moved from 7 o'clock until noon. So that game is just starting over at Elm Street Park and Stalling Stadium. The 3 o'clock game will continue, or the 4 o'clock game uh, for third place uh, is still set for the same time. But they did move the uh, 7 o'clock game up to noon. Unfortunately, uh, the weather's not really, really great right now. A little drizzle out there as we speak. But uh, that's going on at 12 noon for the Little League uh, World Series Softball Championship. Let's go to the Pitt Electric Live Line now and join Mike Oresco, Commissioner for the American Athletic Conference, and he's been kind enough to join us to help us kick off the football season. It's almost here, isn't it, Mr. Commissioner? It really is, Brian. Nice to be with you. Uh, and It's exciting to finally get uh, some actual action, right, instead of everything being off the field the past several months. Uh, it's it's good feeling. I thought I was going to say, you know, take us back to when you found out that the, the latest shocking move as far as realignment goes with UCLA and USC uh, moving to the Big Ten. I mean, was that something that you'd heard through the grapevine, or is that something like for a lot of us it just came out of nowhere? Uh, yeah, no, I had not heard anything. Uh, came out of nowhere, except it's funny, about um, six months prior to that, I had said to one of my staff, it wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if... Uh, there's interest in the Big Ten at, at USC or, or UCLA, uh, or that the Big Ten might have interest in them uh, based on what happened with the, the SEC. Now, it seemed a stretch because of the, the geography, which is quite different than Texas, Oklahoma going to the SEC, Brian. But I did think that uh, there, might, there might be some contact, but I never thought it would happen because of the tradition of the Pac-12, uh, again, the geography, a lot of other factors, and... and so it came as a, an earthquake, you know, uh, even more so than uh, Oklahoma, Texas did. I remember uh, I was working uh, in my office, and I, I uh, looked at my watch. It's tied into my iPhone, and I saw something that seemed to suggest, you know, Big Ten, UCLA, USC, and then immediately checked my iPhone. Couldn't believe it. Um, but that's the world we're living in now with this consolidation. That was I was going to say, you know, do you, do you kind of wake up every morning kind of like sheepishly look at your watch and look at the phone, make sure that nothing else has happened big? Because it seems it seems to run in flurries. I mean, you get that, then you get all the talk about this, 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 and this, and then kind of quiets down a little bit until the next shockwave. That's exactly right. That's exactly what happens. Uh, you know, you, you have the, the what I call the earthquake. Uh, you just mentioned shockwave. And then... Uh, there's all that speculation and everybody thinks something's imminent and often it isn't. Uh, you know, these things play out over a couple of years usually. That's what happened in 2010. That's what happened in 2000, uh, you know, 20. It, it basically played out over time and that's what will happen here. I mean, I don't know whether Big Ten and the SEC are finished, whether you really will see 18 or 20 team super conferences. Uh, you know, the ACC has that grant of rights. It's pretty firm. And um, so it, it's less likely that Clemson, Florida State, Miami would, would move. Uh, everybody's looking to those two conferences, though, because they've got the most money, the SEC and the Big Ten. In fact, we've changed our branding strategy. You know, uh, 
it really was we were we were striving to be P six, you know, power six. There isn't any power five anymore, Brian. It's really power two, P two if you if you want to use that term and everyone else. So the goal now I think should be are you an elite conference within uh FBS, are you one of the top FBS conferences or aren't you? You know, in, ironically, you know, they keep talking about the haves and the have-nots, but we're closer to those those so-called P5 conferences because they've lost the marquee teams that created that whole P5 business in the first place. So we're, we're a lot closer than, than to them than we probably were before, even though we felt we clearly had a legitimate claim to being a, a Power 6 conference based on our achievements, which I think pretty clear. But that's what's happened, and um, I don't know whether it's going to get worse. I think consolidation is, you know, it's like the mom and pop stores seem to go be going away, and you have you have WalMarts, you have the big guys who who pretty much dominate, and and that's what's um, what what we're headed for. Now, the other thing is how much interest will there be in college football because of this? I, I still think there'll be enormous interest. I don't know whether you know it's going to extend to a lot of schools and fan bases that, or that feel left out or that won't be as competitive but you know a lot of it will depend on the playoff structure if, if you have a shot at the playoff and if you're in the playoff your conference year after year your conference is relevant and that's what i think is going to be a, a key key factor going forward yeah I, I was reading some stuff about that as well i know you put the letter out uh and it seems to me like the acc and, and maybe the pac-12 maybe shot themselves in the foot whenever they didn't go for the for the original package did you see it like that Oh uh, yeah, yes, to some degree, definitely. I thought that they should have they should have been on board with that. You know, they they had that alliance, Brian, that we all wondered about. Yeah, we wondered what it really meant. And, we, and I guess I my my biggest question about it was why is the Big Ten in it? I mean, I could understand why the ACC and the Pac-12 might want to you know kind of get together and form a scheduling or other kind of alliance, but it didn't seem to make sense for the Big Ten to have been in it. And sure enough, the Big Ten turns around and takes you know two Pac-12 schools. But um, yeah, there, there's no question that uh, you know the the, pl- the playoff should have been expanded back in, in you know last year. We we really were we had essentially eight votes for, and, and we had those three so-called alliance members opposing it. Uh, on the other hand, I do think that um, if we had done it then, and maybe if we'd had a different kind of uh, or if we'd done the revenue and all. Things would be different. I think now there's definitely going to be a change. Doesn't mean though that we can't ultimately get back to the 12 team playoff or a 14 team playoff with two buys or even a 16 team playoff with no buys. The 16 team playoff has started to gain a little traction. I think there's still the issue about you know uh, teams having to play four games to, to win a championship. So I'm not sure everybody will be on board with that. Uh, although you know the, the biggest difference between that and the 12 team is that you, you don't have the buys. And and we were kind of hanging our hat on the fact that it, the teams that with the buys would be most likely to be in the championship game, and they probably would. Oh, well, they it, in that case, they would only play three games. So the, the idea of playing four games was probably a little more remote. If you have a 16-team playoff, you know, to win a championship, everybody has to play four games. It's pretty tough. What we're thinking about is maybe doing some rule changes during the regular season that would reduce the get you know the the number of plays. So you basically take out almost two full games worth of plays during a season. You know, there's an awful lot of plays in college during a game, which takes it takes its toll. It's a lot of wear and tear. If you can you know stop you know, maybe not stop the clock at certain points and get the games over sooner and have fewer plays, you can eliminate uh, the equivalent at least of, of maybe a couple of games. And would that help? And remember. Only two teams are going to play four games. Now, it's still significant, though, for those two teams. So that's what, you know, but the point is I do think there'll be expansion. I just don't know they'll be on the same terms and, and certainly revenue-wise. I think we all have to take a new look at that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and whether it can be implemented before 2026 is the other question. And we've been told it couldn't because you needed too many logistical hurdles. You had too many logistical hurdles for that to happen. Uh, if we can get something done this fall, which is possible, we're going to be meeting later in the fall. Uh, maybe you can start it in 25, maybe, uh, I don't know, about 24. That might be a stretch. That'd be great because you know, then you've got you know, a, a whole bunch of other rosters included, and that's hundreds of kids who would have a chance to be in the playoff who uh, won't now until the new one starts in 26. But I'm confident that uh, 
it's going to be extended. One last thing on that, Brian. I mean, one of the reasons I'm confident is, you know, if you've got these these conferences now, like the Big Ten and the SEC that have 16, they're going to have 16 teams and, and, and basically assembled and accumulated all the brand names in college football other than a few. <clears throat> they're going to, those, those teams are going to want access to the playoff. They're not going to want to go year after year and, and have their conference only get one bid. And, and, you know, even two bids is unusual. The SEC's done it a few times, but it's not common. And if you only have a bid and maybe two at the absolute most for your conference and you've got nine marquee teams or in the Big Ten's case, maybe you've got six or seven marquee teams, uh, I don't think that's going to sit well. So I, I think they have an interest in expanding this thing. The question is, is it, is it, you know, is it going to be the AQ model where you had six automatics and, and six at larges or, or eight and eight or 10 and six? Uh, or is it going to be all at large? I would never favor all at large. Just, there's no playoff anywhere that has, um, that doesn't have automatic qualifiers. You either win your league or division or whatever and you're in the playoff. You, uh, you really need that. And, and it, you, the championships have to matter. You can't have just at larges. And that puts too much pressure on the committee to, to, you know, weed out teams and, and it's just not going to work. I know it's been talked about. Uh, there is, the current playoff is at larges, but it's only four teams. Once you start expanding it, I think you, you really have to have conference champions involved, and we're going to be uh, very, very adamant about that. Mike Oresco, the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, joining us right now. Questions or comments from Mike on our Facebook live feed. If you'd like to get one or two in, we will certainly uh, pass them along. The Associated Press poll was just released at noon, and the American has Cincinnati at 23 and Houston at 24 from my first glance at it. So uh, the American back in the top 25. How important was it for Cincinnati to get into that uh, Final Four last year, Mike? Well, it was, it was huge. It was quite a, you know, uh, you know, quite an achievement for them and for the conference. It had been building for many years, as you know. We've had a lot of good teams that just didn't have an opportunity, probably should have had that opportunity. Uh, so it was a pretty big thing. We didn't think it would necessarily happen. A lot had to go right, as you know. They had to be undefeated. They did have the ability to play Notre Dame on the road. And that was huge, and also Indiana. So give them all the credit in the world to Luke Fickle and his team. Uh, but it was huge for the conference. It showed what you can do if uh, – you know, if you get a fair shot, uh, the um, and it's a legacy for the conference, Brian, because we know Cincinnati's leaving, we know Houston's leaving, we know UCF's leaving, but they did all that in our conference. And UCF had some great years. Houston had some great years. Uh, Temple and Memphis had some great years. Memphis, uh, you know, has been as important as any team in our league. And uh, ECU, you know, East Carolina, in the first year of our league, may have had the most talent. They had a ter- terrific team, you know, Shane Carden-led team. And, uh, you know, Lincoln Riley was the offensive coordinator. Um, you know, it was just a, uh, one of those things where they lost a lot of close games. And what's encouraging now, though, is to see, to see uh, East Carolina, ECU come back under Mike Houston. And, and they're on the cusp now of, of being really one of our top teams again. Uh, they, they were last year, toward the end of last year, you know, they, they really came on. And, and that's important because we need, we're going to need them and USF and Temple and SMU, which has had a good program the last four years, and Memphis and others, Tulsa, to step up. And now we're going to be adding in a, in a year UTSA and UAB and Charlotte and a few others or FAU, very good teams. And we're, everybody's going to have to step up because we want to maintain our position. We, you know, you mentioned what did that mean to have Cincinnati make the playoff. Well, as you know, we've been on New Year's Day seven of the last nine years, and we've had some big wins and we've had some heartbreaking losses, but they've all been competitive. And to have Cincinnati make the playoff was validation for what we've we've done. We have to keep it going. It's not going to be as easy. I'm not arguing that. But one thing I would remind uh, your your listeners of is, this league, Houston was not, the last five years hasn't, until last year, hadn't been as relevant. Cincinnati uh, was 4-8 and eight in Luke's first year. Prior to that, you know, under Tommy, Tommy Tuberville, they were competitive, but not necessarily one of our best teams. And UCF was 0-12 back in 2015, and then in 16, they were a 500 team, and look what they did later. The point is, over the years, it's not to denigrate those teams. It's just to point out that over the years, we've had a lot of good teams step up, like Temple under Matt Rule. And USF had some terrific teams back when they were a rival of, of UCF. And uh, the same thing, Memphis, again, had, had as much impact on our conference with their big wins against Ole Miss and against UCLA. 
uh, in you know in the uh, the Liberty Bowl on national TV. Those were huge wins. Uh, and then you had uh, SMU come on recently, and, and Tulsa has beaten UCF, I think, the last three or four times they played. So we've had a lot of good teams in this conference. It's not just those three. They're right now at the top, and they're very important to us, and we hate to see them go. But I think we'll have, you know, we'll have a good league co- going forward. We'll rebuild. The DNA hasn't changed. The striving. We still got the ESPN TV deal intact. And people didn't think that would happen, and it did. We've also got, you know, the right uh, places, as you know, we we can uh, recruit, and we can also use the transfer portal. Uh, NIL is a is a wild card. Nobody knows how that's going to work out. But you know, we've got good coaches. We pay our coaches more than any other, you know, so called G five. Uh, you know, leagues teams, and so I, I think we're well positioned, and hoping that uh, that old G five label goes away, and it's just all FPS. You've got UAB, North Texas, Rice, Florida Atlantic, Charlotte, and UTSA coming into the league. How will the scheduling work? And are you looking at divisions, or is all that still have to be played out? Well, we're still talking about it, uh, Brian, but I think we're, we're likely, very likely, to do away with divisions as we have already. You know, we, we've been an eleven team conference the last few years. And we did not have divisions, so we won't have them this year. I, I think going forward, even at 14 teams, we're probably going to scrap divisions because we want our two best teams playing in the championship game, especially if you have a, a chance at the playoff. If your champion could be one of the highest-ranked teams and could get into the playoff by virtue of being the champion, you want it to be one of your best teams. And so the two best teams with the two best conference records uh, will likely be uh, you know, our, uh, our goal to have that happen. And I think... Um, and we haven't decided yet, but we're working hard on it. We also have to figure out how we're going to schedule. We'll probably stay with an eight-team conference schedule, at least for now. Uh, I think it's important that our teams have the ability to play four non-conference games. You know how important it was for Cincinnati to have those two P5 games, and then you also want a couple of games that are uh, a little more winnable. So everybody really would like to have uh, the ability to play four. And then uh, as far as the um, how we're going to do the eight-team conference schedule, do you have permanent opponents? Do you, do you have a rotation, a complete rotation, so teams play each other more often? That, we've, we've hired a, a very good consultant, uh, and uh, we've been working. You know, Scott Draper's our football DP, and we've, the conference has been involved. Everybody's been working hard on this to try to figure out the best way to do it. And one last thing, we, we don't have a lot of uh, natural rivals, as you know, rivalries. And so that's a little less important. You know, the SEC's got some tough decisions to make because, you know, Alabama has Auburn. They have Tennessee as, as real rivals. And, and uh, Georgia, uh, you know, excuse me, Auburn's got Alabama and Georgia. And that Auburn-Georgia rivalry, as you know, goes back, what, 130 years. We don't really have that. And so we have a, probably a little more flexibility as to how we're going to do it. But we do want – it's a 14-team league now, and we do want teams to play each other, you know, as often as they can. So – We'll have a rotation that uh, works in that direction. Michael Resco, the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, joining us. You know, it's funny because you know we're getting ready for the 2022 football season. We're gearing up for that. East Carolina has North Carolina State coming to town. By the way, the Wolfpack will come to town to rank 13th in that new AP poll that came out at noon today. But but you know, you guys behind the scenes are working at 2023 and beyond. So, so there's always work going on. Well, you know, it's interesting you, you say that, Brian, because you you almost forget that it's 2022. You know, and, and I felt that way when I was at CBS and ESPN over the years. You're always planning ahead, and you're always, your mind's in 2023 and 24 and 25. And then, as you know, over the last several months, all you've been reading about is when is when are Oklahoma and Texas going to join the SEC? When are UCLA and USC going to join the Big Ten as a 23-24? And and you, you forget that yeah we're actually in 2022 and we're we're about ready to start the season and, and incidentally you mentioned the Wolf Pack yeah that that's a great opportunity though for for Mike and his team uh, to be able to play the 13th ranked team opening game at, at your place that that should be terrific and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know East Carolina ECU can spring the upset you know the Pirates have a good team now good quarterback obviously a veteran quarterback and I just think it's. Uh, you know, it's time, and uh, that that's a great opportunity, though, to start the season. And um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. It's 2022, but our minds have been off on 2023, 24 with you know, TV negotiations, with 
when teams are moving, you almost need a color coded, uh, you know, t- color coded notebook tab list to, to find out who's who's in which conference in which year. Uh, but that's the nature of our business now. Wrapping things up with Mike Oresco, a couple of quick questions for you. First of all, have you got a calendar out that, and, and you know when you're coming to Greenville this year? Will you be able to make it down to Greenville? Oh, uh, definitely will. Absolutely will. Not sure which game yet, but I, I, I promise you, I will definitely be there. Oh, no, no question about it. Uh, and you know, your your president, your chancellor, Philip Rogers, is our um, NCAA presidential forum representative. Uh, you know, he does a great job for us. But I definitely will be at a game. Not sure which one yet, but um, you know, I'll, I'll probably determine that in the next uh, next several weeks. I usually try to map out you know where I'm going as the season starts. But you will definitely see me in, in Greenville, and I always enjoy my trips there. Always been terrific. Looking forward to that. And the final question has to do with media days. We had to go back to Zoom this year because of some concerns, and, and we understand that completely. But when you guys get back to normal and get a media days, are you going to Newport or are you going to Texas? No, we'll probably be in Texas, uh, Brian. I think Newport, as great as that was, you know, the clam bake and all. Oh, yeah. I think we're going we're gonna to resurrect that. I know you've been a regular there. It's <laughs> great to have you. I remember doing some – some media with you, yeah. You know, with the ocean as a backdrop, it was terrific. Oh, that was great. But it really was. We will definitely be in person again next year. One of the reasons this year we didn't do it was because one, we we just felt that with with the three teams leaving, it would be better if we we did it, you know, virtually. There'd be less emphasis on that, you know, and and, and less awkwardness. And it, it turned out really well. I mean, you you could do these virtually, and you don't really notice much difference. Uh, we we had a fair amount of media that, that, that tuned in. Uh, we had some interesting guest appearances, but we'll definitely be back in person, probably at a hotel, you know, in in the uh, in the Dallas area. I know it's a little less convenient for ECU than maybe some of the other teams. As you know, we have a whole cluster of teams that are that are clustered around the, the Mississippi and Texas in that area, uh, which makes it con- a little more convenient for them. Uh, and the, the clam bake was a lot of fun, and it, it was it was all extremely extremely expensive, and with inflation and everything else going up now, it would be a, a real real financial burden to continue it. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. And, but we're not there anymore. We're you know we're we're based in Texas now. It's a different different conference. Ge- geographically, we really have, have skewed more Middle Atlantic down t- toward the southeast uh, to the southwest. So we're we're a different conference and. Uh, now that we're we're in Texas, I think we're, we'll likely have the uh, the media day somewhere there. How do you like it in Texas? You like it? Yeah, I really do. I do. It's, it's a little hot in the summer, you know, but but it's really been great for us. And one of the things too, Dallas is a dynamic place. It's, it's sort of the epicenter of college sports these days. You know, you you have the Big Twelve, you have uh, you know Southland, you have Conference USA headquartered there. You have the National. A football foundation office headquartered there you know you've got jerry jones and all the great things he does in, in the area with the cowboys uh you've got just a lot there and, and it's a big dynamic place easy to find people to fill open slots you know, occasionally you lose some people and there are just so many so many talented people in the area who want to be there uh, texas has been attracting you know people for a long time now uh so no it's been good and also it is geographically you, we'll have you know four teams in Texas. We'll have Wichita. We'll have a, you know obviously Tulsa, Oklahoma. We have Memphis. We have New Orleans. Uh, you know we have UAB. They're all pretty close. And our eastern teams, it's it's an easy flight into the Dallas airport. You know that's the airport you can get to directly from pretty much anywhere. And our basketball tournament, Brian, both tournaments, as you know, men and women are in Fort Worth at that incredible Dickies Arena. So that's worked really well too, and, and we've uh, we've saved a lot of money. We always had our league meetings in uh, in Dallas at the airport. So uh, financially, it's also been really beneficial to us to uh, you know to be there, uh, and so consequently, uh, very happy with the move. Um, but uh, like anything else, you know, you have to shed some things that were were pretty neat, and that clam bake was was great, and it was always fun to see how many. Oh yeah. Lobsters, those kids could eat. The linemen sometimes ate as many as eight or nine or ten. In fact, one year I had to order a hundred more lobsters because we just didn't have enough. It was really something. It was. Those guys, they could go through it. And I, I tell you what, that was that was good eating. I'm sure we can find something in Texas. Final thoughts with uh, Mike Oresco. Anything you want to tell Pirate fans before we let you go? Well, I, I just want you to know that we've, we've always felt that, you know, uh, 
the, the pirate nation was very important to the conference. You know, we, uh, we saw the football, you know, dip a bit, but it, it, we're really thrilled that it's coming back. We're also, you know, Michael Schwartz, you know, the two Mikes, you know, we have Michael Schwartz and now we have Kim McNeil and we think that, you know, they'll do a great job with the basketball programs, you know, Cliff Godwin, I, uh, you know, again, so close to the, uh, you know, to the College World Series. And, and you know, I, I remember when it was 7-2 in the seventh inning, I thought, oh, this is finally the year. You know, it just yeah. didn't happen, but it's a great program. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, but, we're, we're, you know, you're just an important place. And, you know, you know, the other thing I always used to say about football, and football's our main topic right now, you had kind of, you, you know, what I always considered an SEC-type fan base, you know, an extremely, extremely, you know, committed fan base and uh, really care about pirate football. Got a great tradition. You know, we all remember Jeff Blake, uh, Ernest Biner, all the great players, uh, Junior Smith, you know. Uh, uh, I, I know I'm forgetting some people, the great linebackers you've had, and uh, Robert Jones. You know, you've had great players there and uh, great tradition. The, the stadium renovation was great. You know, Steve Ballard, the, the president, when, when you know, the conference was reinvented, was very instrumental in, in making – and keeping us together and, and creating a conference that really gave everyone opportunity. That's what we've been. We've been a conference of opportunity. And just good to see East Carolina, you know, really firing on all cylinders. And, you know, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, you, John has done a great job as AD, you know, John Gilbert, and he's head of our finance committee. John is one of my confidants. He, he just does a great job and, and he understands what, you know, what the ECU tradition is. I, I go back all the way to Dave Hart and the old, uh, do they still have the old pirate, uh, the, the pig, the pigskin, you know, the great pirate purple gold pigskin pig out party. It's been, it's been kind of rebranded a couple of times. It's not quite the same as it used to be, but still, yeah, Dave Hart came up with that years and years. That was the first year I came to Greenville 84. I think the first one was right before I got here. And then the second one was my first year here, but yeah, that's, that's been a great tradition. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been to a few of them, and um, I remember Dave would wake me up at four in the morning, and we'd go over and take a look at uh, everybody. Had to be, uh, you know, all had their table settings, and had to all be uh, looking good because that was part of the judging. It wasn't yeah. how well the uh, the pig got roasted, and then of course they had the pulled pork, um, you know, uh, box lunches for everybody, and it turned, uh, it made, uh, you know, the the you know the spring game into a real real festival you know suddenly you'd get 10 15 thousand people it was a real carnival i remember they had rides for the kids it was really terrific and uh didn't know whether it was still still in place but uh i'll definitely look forward to being there this year and, and again i think uh, probably be for a conference game you know a little later in the year and uh you know, look forward to it. It sounds great. Mike Oresco, I can't wait to see you. Mike, and, uh, miss seeing you whenever we didn't have the uh, in-person stuff, but uh, looking forward to seeing you when you come to Greenville. That'll be great. Well, you know, it's funny. We, we keep forgetting we've been through the pandemic and we just didn't travel as much. But always it was always great, Brian, seeing you in Newport, and I'll look forward to seeing you uh, you know, uh, in, in Greenville. And thanks so much for your time today. We certainly appreciate it. We know you're busy. You're already in 2025 and 2026. So we're glad we, we brought you back to 2022 for a little bit. Yeah, it's really nice to do that. And, uh, again, all your listeners and all the viewers, uh, all the people that care about, you know, pirate football and other sports, you know, I, I send my best and uh, look forward to a great year. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Mike Oresco, Commissioner of the American Athletic Conference. We'll take a commercial break right now. We'll come back. Former East Carolina coach Skip Holtz joins us. He led the Birmingham Stallions to the USFL Championship, and he joins us next after this. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports, Highway 11, north of the airport in Greenville. The Rays' Drew Rasmussen took a perfect aim into the ninth inning yesterday against the Orioles. Baltimore pushed one run across, but the Rays won 4-1. to one. The O's are now a game and a half behind Tampa Bay for the final wildcard spot in the National League. The Braves took care of the Marlins 3-1. to one. Rookie Michael Harris, number 12 for Atlanta. The Yankees were shut out by the Red Sox 3 to nothing. Michael Walker the win as he threw seven scoreless innings. The Nationals were shut out by the Padres, 6 to nothing. Blake Snell throws six scoreless innings and strikes out 10 for San Diego. The Nationals are a major league worse, 38 and 78. The NASCAR race in Richmond yesterday was won by Kevin Harvick. The NIT is moving out of Madison Square Garden in New York. The semifinals and championship game will be played in Las Vegas next year. And the Wood Ducks beat Fayetteville, 6 to 4. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. The best burgers around. 
Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. One of basketball's all-time greats passed away last month. Some thoughts on his incredible career and life is next. Let's party, Pirate Nation. The Pirate Radio football kickoff party is approaching fast, and tickets are on sale right now for only $10. 100% of the ticket sales will be donated to local charities. Join Pirate Radio Thursday, September 1st at the State Theater in downtown Greenville, featuring 80s music by The Breakfast Club, plus many more special surprises. Go to PR927FM.com now to get your tickets before it sells out. Bill Russell was a winner, one of the greatest winners of all time in any sport. He won 11 NBA championships with the Boston Celtics. He also won two NCAA championships at the University of San Francisco in 1955 and 1956. And he captained the gold medal winning U.S. national basketball team at the 1956 Summer Olympics. Russell was a 12-time NBA All-Star, four-time rebounding champion. He always wore number six. It is retired in the Raptors in Boston and also retired at the University of San Francisco. He was the first black head coach in the NBA and won two NBA championships. His battles with Wilt Chamberlain were legendary. He lived in retirement in Mercer Island, Washington, where he passed away. One of the all-time greats, Bill Russell. Come on back again next time and we'll visit Inside the Booth. Hi, this is Parker Bunch. When I'm not hitting dingers or going viral, I'm listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. I want to thank Mike Oresco, the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, for joining us that first half hour. Nice little conversation there. And we'll see Mike later on this season at an East Carolina game, one of the conference games for the Pirates, as he says he is heading our way later on this season. Joining us now, Skip Holtz, the former East Carolina coach, the 19th. Pirate coach in East Carolina school history. He led East Carolina to Conference USA Championships in 08 and 09, and he led the Birmingham Stallions to the USFL Championship uh, this past spring. He joins us now. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the title. Thank you, Brian. It was an awful lot of fun. I enjoyed it. How you been? I've been great. Been great. Trying to get ready for football season. You know how that goes. And kind of a weird football season for you, though, because you're not getting ready. You've already wrapped up your championships. You're kind of kicking back, right? You know what? It has been uh, certainly a unique fall for me. For 35 years, I haven't had I haven't had a fall off yet, and so went through and coached at Louisiana Tech last fall, and then the the USFL this uh, this spring, and so I ended up. It's like my dad said. He said, "Well, how, how was your year?" And I said, "Well, Dad, in the last 12 months, I've coached 24 games. So, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to this having this fall off a little bit." And I've been had an opportunity to go around and see some different places and going to go to some different games around the country this year. So I'm really looking forward to it. That sounds like a lot of fun just to kind of go around and, you know, pick pick and choose where you want to go and watch a game and hang out. And you promised last year that you're going to come to Greenville for a game. Do you have any more details on that? Do you have a date for us and when we're going to tailgate and hang out? No, but I certainly want to get back there. It's been so long since I've been back to Greenville and so many phenomenal memories. So many great friends that we had there in Greenville. Uh, I'm definitely going to get back there. I'm just not sure when it's going to be yet this fall. One of your former players, by the way, is the new head football coach at North Pitt, C.J. Wilson. And we had a blast talking to him. I think it was last week on the radio. But we, we went back to the Southern Miss game, and his memory of the whole play was a little bit off, but I had to remind him exactly how it happened. But that, to me, when he blocked the extra point, ran it back for the two points for East Carolina, is really one of the greatest plays in ECU football history that nobody really ever talks about. But that was a key play in that game because Southern Miss had all the momentum. They were coming back, and you know, for that to end up like that, it was great. Well, it's not very often you see a 300-pounder yeah. up down the sideline with the ball under his arm for a touchdown when he's got to run 90 yards with it. 
Uh, he is, but what uh, I mean, we had some great, great players, but even better people. And you know, you look at that defensive front with Linville Joseph and all the success he had, and you look at uh, C.J. Wilson, who had great success, Jay Ross, uh, so many guys that we had on that football team that uh, just made some instrumental, some huge plays. And we had a, a unique group of guys that had really bonded together. Scotty Robinson, the other defensive end. Uh, I just, I would really love to get back at some point, and interact, and, and just reminisce with so many of those guys because they were some, they were some great years for sure. And we won a lot of games. We had a lot of fun. We had some really good people that were a joy to coach and to be around. When you were coaching that game and you saw the, the blocked extra point, what were you thinking? Because I, I was standing there, and I remember him very well playing for Northside High School, playing running back. We had him on touchdown Friday a lot of times. And, and he said last week, he said, man, I thought I was a running back again. I had that ball in my hand, and I was going to be a running back. And he said he almost ran out of gas about the 15-yard line. But uh, that, that was something else. That, that was about 100 pounds earlier. Yeah. Running back. <laughs> that was about 100 pounds. He was about 200 pounds when he was a running back. He was yeah. 300 pounds when he ran that thing down, when he ran it down the field. But uh, great play. You know, at that time, Southern Miss, I remember when I first came to Greenville, we went through the entire schedule. We played everybody. And at the end of our first year there, we went, we went five and six. Uh, and I just, I remember saying then, Southern Miss is the team we got to beat. That's, we need to use that as a standard. Uh, they had done such a great job, and they were consistently winning. They were athletic. They were fast. They were big. They were physical. And I just remember saying then, it was like, that's the standard we need. If we can beat Southern Miss, we can win this league. And so we had some just knockdown, drag out battles with Southern Miss, some great games that went back and forth. But uh, that's where it all started. And so every time we played Southern Miss, there was a, there was a circle around that one because they were the class of the league when we came into it. And so it was, uh, like I said, we did. We had some, some great games and just some great, some great individual plays. But you know, when you look at C.J., I mean, like I said, it's not very often you get a big defensive lineman that has a chance to rumble and tumble down the field with the ball under his arm. But uh, there were so many great games we had with them and so many individual plays. But um, it was an awful lot of fun as you reminisce and you go back and you look at so many of the games we had that, championship game against Houston when we played Houston, Tulsa. Uh, I go back to some of the knockdown drag outs we have with them, but even some of the, you know, some of the non-conference games that we had the opportunity to play there. Uh, because when I was there, I mean, we played, it was almost, we never played a one double A. I mean, we, our non-conferences were Virginia Tech, West Virginia, NC State, North Carolina, Virginia. I mean, we played, we played a great schedule while we were there. And we're very fortunate and had some huge wins. You go back to after we had beat Virginia Tech uh, over in Charlotte at the opening game of the year and then came back and played West Virginia when they were top five in the country. They had Pat Wolf and those guys, and we beat them there at home 24-3. to I mean, we just had some, what a great environment, what a great experience. And the fans there at Tech have always been so awesome and such a huge home field advantage to play in front of. When you think back to playing a rivalry game, uh, and I bring up North Carolina State because uh, the poll just came out, State will come to town for that September the 3rd matchup, ranked 13th in the nation by the Associated Press. But what's it like when you play a game like that? You know, it's a great it's a great opportunity for your players, and they're unbelievable challenges. Like I said, when we remember, you know, you look at it, and there's a lot of people that are going to look at it and go, well, okay, we'll lose that one, we'll lose that one, but then we'll come back and we'll win this one. And, you know, people like to project uh, wins and losses as, as they go through a football season. But as a football team, you never go into a game and say, we got no shot. You, you never go in. You say, you know what, we may need a little help to get it. We may need a turnover along the way. Virginia Tech, we needed to block a punt. We played an unbelievable game defensively against West Virginia. I mean, you find a way, and you go into the beginning of the week, and you talk about it, it's going to be really hard. But when you watch a team be really focused and dialed in, you gain more and more confidence as the week goes on. And so I think it'll be, you know, it'll be a great opportunity for many of those players there. They probably, you know, there's, there's some geographical rivalries, obviously, with NC State being so close, and Dave Doran's done a phenomenal job there. But when you put your team together, you know, you start putting together the plan, 
and get them to buy in and believe. And by the time you get to game day, you go out on that field feeling like uh, you got a chance to win that game. And then you got to go out, you got to get the ball to bounce your way and compete, and do a lot of those little things you got to do to win. But it'll be a great opportunity for them. And I loved playing those games. I, I know it was hard because we didn't have, so we didn't get the opportunity to play a one double A opponent. We didn't quote quote we didn't schedule wins while we were there. Uh, but it is a phenomenal opportunity, and those are the games you want to play in. I mean, because then you know you look back after five years in Greenville, and we beat NC State, we beat North Carolina, we beat Virginia, um, we beat West Virginia, we beat Virginia Tech. I mean, we had some huge wins. Now, on the wrong, we got beat by them too. <laughs> uh, we didn't win them all, but certainly to have the opportunity to go play in those games, uh, I think those games are invaluable for your football team, and I think they get you prepared to play at that level. Then when you go into conference, when you go into conference play, you've built a standard that you're trying to compete to that's a lot higher than your conference. And I think that those games helped us grow and mature uh, and look at a level that we needed to play if we wanted to be successful. Former Pirate coach Skip Holtz joining us. He led the Birmingham Stallions to the championship in the USFL this past spring. And, uh, you know, we had you on right before the season started. I think you were at a coach's meeting and you came out and did a little bit with us. But uh, that's one of the reasons a lot of us watched some of the USFL because we knew you were out there, and especially when you guys got in the playoffs to watch the championship game. And But every time that, that we've talked, you say how much fun it was and how, how enjoyable it was. And But it was quite an experience because you had guys – I mean, you go into the draft. Draft and, and it's like, who do you pick? It's like Little League draft, isn't it? Yeah. It was, I loved it, Brian. I, I did. I loved it. Um, you know what? It gave me, I've been a head coach for 23 years. And boy, I was the quarterback coach. I was the offensive coordinator and I was the head coach. And so I got, I think as, I loved as much as anything, the opportunity to be in the position meetings, the opportunity to daily run the meetings and put the offense in and really uh, start to build your product and your confidence and what you were trying to do and how you were trying to do it. Uh, I love the hands-on that I had the opportunity to do it. And, you know, when we first we put it together, we hired our staffs in February. We did the draft in February. The players reported in March. And we played our first game in April. And I had no idea what that was going to look like. But the one thing that everybody went through it that way Everybody had one month of camp to put it together before we went to go play. But I'll tell you what I was really impressed with. I was impressed with the product of the USFL. But there are over 50 players that were in our league that are now in an NFL camp. And there were some really good football players that had an opportunity to get out on the field and showcase their talents and abilities. And there was no there was no NAL. Uh, there was no transfer portal. Uh, it was, you know, you called guys and told them you were going to draft them, and guys cried. You know, because once you get out of college and, and you may be in the NFL for a year or two or on a practice squad, and all of a sudden you get left behind, I mean, that dream is over, and all of a sudden the coach comes and throws you a lifeline and says, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity to play professional football again. And I mean, guys cried. They were grateful. It was, I use the analogy, it's like everybody took a football class and it's like you told them, if you want to continue playing, you got to make an A in this class. I mean, you'd go into a meeting room and you'd say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And you would start talking and everybody's pulling out paper and pen and writing like shorthand every word you say. You know, they're just, they're trying to hang on every word because that's, that's how important it was to them to go out and not just play the game, but to go out and play at a high level because they were hungry. They all had a why. They all want to continue playing, whether it's the joy of the game and just playing in the USFL or having the opportunity to make it into an NFL camp. And so I absolutely loved the relationship with the players. Uh, I loved working with them one-on-one. Uh, you've got a much that was a lot less than I was used to. I mean, I've gone out on the practice field with 120 players, and all of a sudden you go out in the NFL and you've got you know, you have 48, and you're like, wow. <laughs> this is a little different. Uh, you got about half the players, and we only activated at the beginning of the season. We only activated 38 for game day. And so it was uh, It was certainly different. It was unique. It had its own set of challenges that you had to adjust to as a coach. But the relationship with the players, coaching ball, being on the grass, it was one of my funnest years in coaching. I really enjoyed it. 
The USFL this year played all their games in Birmingham. Is the plan going forward to, to go to different cities next year, or have they decided? Well, right now, what if I don't know that anything's final, but I think what's gaining a lot of momentum is having two hubs. Uh, one of the things about the hubs that is so cost-efficient for a new league starting up, and we put eight teams in Birmingham. Uh, we all played there on you know Friday, Saturdays, Sundays. Uh, I thought it was great. You got an opportunity to get to know your players and your coaches, but you also got an opportunity to, to intermingle and mix with the other teams and the other coaches. And what I'm hearing right now is there's a lot of talk about uh, doing a southern hub in Birmingham and maybe doing a, nor- a northern hub up in Detroit. Um, and so they're talking about doing maybe two hubs where they can start to get some of these teams into the northern section and the southern section where, where people have an opportunity to come and support their team. Uh, but I think it'll probably be another year of hubs. But then I think just predicating on how it goes and what decisions Fox makes on when they're ready to really probably sell those teams off and put them in their individual cities and start playing again. But it was ultra successful. The ratings, we, we outdrew Major League Baseball. Uh, we outdrew the NBA playoffs, we had major league soccer, and we had some, there was a, there is certainly a need, uh, and there's certainly a desire to watch uh, professional football, even in the spring, and I think that was the biggest thing that came out of it, and I thought Fox did an unbelievable job of the way they put it together, it's the first spring league that has made it through a complete season, it didn't have to fold its tent um, since the USFL played in the early 80s. And so I think it's a real testament to Fox, the way they did it, the way they put it together, uh, the balance, how evenly paired all the teams were, the quality of coaches that they had. I just thought there were an awful lot of positives that made it a really fun experience. And and I think it's going to be here to stay. When you look at your career, do you see yourself coaching in college one more time at least? Do you see yourself maybe trying to go the pro route since you enjoyed it so much with the USFL? Or, or you know, I know you got another year on your contract, but, but uh, what do you think? Well, you know, never say never. Um, there's a, God has a plan. I don't know what it is. You know, you can sit here and put together. Well, no, this is what I want to do, but they don't always happen that way. You know, the, the job markets in college football and professional football are normally in the winter, and those things move and happen in December and January. And we're just going to see have to see what, uh, what opportunities are in front of us um, on whether or not you continue to do this or you make a move and maybe get in back into college or get into pro ball. I love coaching, and I, I have found this year that I have as much energy to coach now as I did when I was 30. I uh, absolutely loved what I went through this year, and I think I probably bit off more than I can chew, being the head coach, the coordinator, and the quarterback coach, and meeting with everybody as much as I did. But it's also one of the things that I enjoyed about it was there wasn't any idle time. I mean, you had something to do all the time, but it was coaching ball. It's building relationships. It's taking these young men to dinner and talking to them about their story and what's their why and what can we do to help them. Uh, and then watching that football team give up their own individualism in professional ball, which is very rare for the good of what we needed to do as a team. And it was just a lot of fun to watch and be part of. I will cherish that year for forever as one of my fun years in coaching. But I don't know what the future is going to hold. Right now, my, my wife and I, we're down here in Florida, and we're, we're going to tend to see what's happening. Right now, we're in the process of free agency with the USFL and add some people here. And as, as the NFL makes some of their cuts and there's going to be more free agents on the street, try to add some more talent to your roster. Um, but then we're just going to have to wait and see, but I would certainly not rule out, um, trying to put my toe into the NFL. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't rule out the opportunity to get back into coaching in college. Uh, I have, like I said, for 35 years, I've been a college football coach. It's what I've done. I have loved it. I've loved every minute of it. I say all the time, I've never had to go to work a day in my life. And I am really, I'm blessed and I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to work with so many great players and so many great people and have the opportunity to live in so many different places around the country uh, and to experience a lot of different people. And so I've always said that Greenville is one of my favorite stops. I think it's really unique. I think it's really special. I think they've got an unbelievable fan base there that makes them probably more unique than 
almost anybody as a group of five school uh, with the following that they have, the support that they have, and how many people follow the Pirates. It is just, it's a, it's a great place. I was on an airplane in Seattle, and I got on the airplane, and the pilot stopped me, and he said, are you Skip Holtz? I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm an East Carolina grad, and I want to shake your hand and tell you thank you. We're in Seattle. <laughs> That's awesome. An East, an East Carolina grad in Seattle. I mean, it's just, it was, uh, like I said, one of, really enjoyed it there. Loved the relationships and the people, and everybody was just so good to us while we were there. Uh, our kids grew up there. It was just a lot of fun, incredible memories. Wrapping things up with Skip Holtz. Now, you said you're trying to get back to Greenville. You have some other stops. What are some of the other stops that, that you hope to make on your college football tour this year? Well, I've got Trey is coaching at UNC Charlotte with Will Healy. Um, Trey is Trey is there, so I went up and spent a week with them during training camp a little bit. I need to get I need to get up and see them a couple times with Trey coaching. Uh, Haley has now accepted a job with the Seattle Seahawks, and she's working with um, with them. She's working with both the GM and Coach Carroll. And she is doing great out there, so I'm going to have to go out to Seattle sometime this fall and go take a game in Seattle and go support my children the way they have supported me. Uh, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go. I've got an opportunity to go to the Notre Dame Ohio State game to start the season. Wow! Um, so I'm going to yeah, I'm going to get a chance to go up there and see that. And so I haven't been back to a game at Notre Dame since probably I was coaching at South Florida. Um, and so I'd like to get back there and go back. I'll probably go back up the. I think the 17th, they're having a kind of a Holtz's Heroes. Anybody that played for Coach Holtz uh, is coming back, and they're having a banquet that weekend. So I'll probably go up there for that. But I'm just anxious to go around and see a bunch of the different games and support a lot of, well, family and friends that are still in coaching. That sounds like a lot of fun. Just thinking about some of the places you get a chance to go to this fall, and uh, you've given uh, your whole life to football. We certainly appreciate your time in Greenville. We appreciate your time today. You're a great, great friend, and uh, love to see you this fall. You know, I'm going to be there. I promise you. You mark it down. I will be in Greenville for a game this fall. All right. Mark it down, everybody. Skip Holtz is coming home. Well, well, I'm going to have to. I need some money, so I'm going to have to come play steel and golf. So I there you go. Well, that'll be easy money. <laughs> Drew might take yours, but but uh, you can k- take coaches. Drew will take Drew will take mine, but I'll take Mike. There you go. That'll be great. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you this fall. Thank you so much. All right. That, uh, I've got great respect for you, Brian, and the job you do and the professionalism and what you do your business. Thank you. We certainly appreciate you, Coach. Thanks so much. Skip Holtz, who led the USFL Birmingham Stallions to the championship this past year. We'll take a commercial break, and then we'll wrap up this edition of the Brian Bailey Show right after this. Make a splash with Bassett Triple Summer Savings from Bostick Sug Furniture. Hot looks, cool styles. Kick back, relax, and upgrade your seats and save. Buy any regular price Bassett recliner, sofa, or sectional and get $50 to $150 off every additional seat with free local delivery plus 12 months special financing. Shop our wide selection on in-stock bedrooms, dining rooms, and other living rooms. And save the sales tax and get free local delivery now at Bostick Sug Furniture. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. It's bow time. Why are Bojangles Chicken Supremes called Supremes? Well, with golden crispy chicken tenderloins this juicy, tender, and full of bold flavor, what else would you call them? Superbs? Nah, that would be weird. Get your Chicken Supremes combo today with a scratch-made biscuit, your choice of fixin', legendary iced tea, and have you heard there's a new sauce in town? Try our new creamy buffalo sauce when you get a Chicken Supremes combo today. It's bow time. This isn't your regular cola, so this isn't your regular cola ad. No beach parties or family barbecues here, just Nitro Pepsi, the first cola ever infused with nitrogen. 
So forget everything you thought you knew about soda, because that nitrogen gives us a whole new experience. Think an infusion of smaller bubbles for a cola that's got a lighter, smoother texture. And don't get me started on the pour. You don't pour this like any other cola. We're talking turn the can completely upside down and watch as those bubbles cascade into the glass to create a frothy, luxurious foam topping. Can your cola do that? I didn't think so. Unless you've got your own Nitro Pepsi, in which case, cheers to your great taste. Because you already know that the only thing better than the pour is the unapologetic cola taste. Ah. What else is there to say? From the creamy foam to the smooth texture to its unbelievably delicious flavor, this is cola like you've never had it before. Time to bring your taste buds to the next frontier. Nitro Pepsi. Smooth. Creamy. Delicious. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar with daily specials. And here's the lineup. Mondays feature $7 margaritas and half-price appetizers. Tuesday is stuffed seafood night. Wednesday is date night. Thursday is roasted smoked lamb chop night. Fridays is prime rib night. And Saturday is Italian night and is also Fred and Wilma night with our 36-ounce bone-in tomahawk steak just like the Flintstones. And on Sunday, it's our legendary brunch from 10 to 2. The Rick House, American Provisions and Spirits 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With homes in Blackwood, Mills Creek, Dalton's Cove and Farmville, and Belmar and Aiden, they're constantly expanding. Now to Laurel Glen and Sarah's Way, plus the new duplex community at Abigail Trails. BMS Builders can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or ECU football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes and they can build yours as well. Call 916-1578 for BMS Builders. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back as we wrap up this edition of The Brian Bailey Show. Maryland leads Texas at the Little League Softball World Series 1-0. They're in the bottom of the second inning, and hopefully the rain will stay away this afternoon. They can get that thing uh, finished up. But Maryland leads Texas 1-0 in the bottom of the second. I want to thank the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, Mike Oresco, for joining us today in our show. Also, want to thank Skip Holtz, the uh, former East Carolina Pirate football coach who led the Birmingham Stallions to the USFL Championship this past year. Thanking our guest from today. Coming up next week, well, we know that Luke Fisher, the former East Carolina tight end, is going to join us. We've got a couple other uh, things out there. In a couple of weeks, Dave Dorn, the head coach at North Carolina State, will uh, join us for a little bit as we get set for East Carolina Pirate football against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. That is our show for this Monday. We'll see you back here next week on The Brian Bailey Show. This has been The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostic Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagler, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. Great to break that down. Meantime, other things that I want to get to is I'm looking for your phone calls and your reaction. Oh, one of the breaking note, James Kelly is chasing cows. Not exactly sure what that means yet. Have not had time to get fully into that with him yet, but it seems on brand, doesn't it? His brand being off-brand. That's his brand, being off-brand. Let's go to some baseball for a minute. So Friday, Major League Baseball announced that Fernando Tatis Jr.